Yo, we are back in the desk. This is Flex. It's Stuck in Middle Podcast, platform for entrepreneurs, innovators, creators of African descent, where we discuss ideas, experiences, and advice on how we can break the mold, how we can break barriers. Appreciate every returning watcher, every returning listener. Hit that subscribe button, hit the ring so you get updates every time we drop something new. Listen, this machine is driven by your support. So if you hit sitmpodcast.com backslash store, you shop Stuck in Middle Podcast merch. Listen, man, I'm excited for this. I'm rushing through this thing because I want to get to the guest guest. You know what I mean? She's returning <laughs> on the platform. Need no introduction, but I'm going to introduce her anyway. We got young Izzy Ekbet in the building. <laughs> <laughs> and you pronounced it correctly. Whoa. Hey, welcome. Whoa. <laughs> Listen, Thank you we, have, we have the intro to this uh, this podcast on YouTube that we used to promote. Uh, we sent it out to, you know, it's like uh, media platforms and stuff. Yeah. And you were the highlight of it. Oh, really? I don't know if you see that video. Whoa. You say, yeah, you was like, it's lit. I just want to stop. I just want to stop. I didn't know you owe me. You owe me uh, some some royalties uh, on the on the ten percent revenue monetization you've been I doing. I know, right? You owe me. Thank you, you heard right? <laughs> bring the door. Bring the door. How you feeling? Welcome back. Thank you for having me. I feel great. It's been three years, bruh. I just deeped it because I'm like, it was like eggplant tour. Yeah, that was three years ago. Three years ago. Eggplant oh, is it four? Tour. Uh, 2017. 20, yeah, three years. Yeah, three years. Mm-hmm. Three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, since the last time you've traveled the world, a lot of stuff has happened. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, at this point, what is next to conquer for Young Easy? Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, this is just the beginning. I honestly feel like this is kind of like the beginning of my career. Um, so the past six years have kind of been laying the foundation. So now I'm ready to rip the benefits mm. you know eat the fruits mm. of the tree that i've planted man <laughs> let's let's take it all the way back to the beginning there's yes. no time for introductions y'all can go watch the previous <laughs> video you know saying all the introductions and everything but eggplant tour to now mm-hmm. uh was this strategic or you just like yo i don't even know how this all happened because you know for context bruh when you came here for eggplant tour i think you were like 11k on instagram Probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. 17? He was like, let's, know. let's, oh, wait, oh, eggplant. When we started touring at that time, I think that's when eggplant, um, hit. So I think I was probably at like 60K. Yeah. Yeah. Now 200 and like something. Something. <laughs> You've been a, a Apollo Theater, you know what I'm saying? All kind of video. Like, was this strategic? Do you, were you, are you like, yeah, this, this is going as I planned it? Or you like, man, God is just moving or, you know, whatever. I think God is just moving. Um, Obviously, I think we what we do is I have the goal that I want to reach. And then as I live through each day or each year, I am able to pick the opportunities that make sense for that goal. Mm. So I wouldn't say I had everything planned to the T. Right. But when I see that something works and it's um, helping me reach the goal even more then. I would just try to repeat that. So, like, the first tour with the eggplant tour, there were a lot of pros to going on that tour. So, each year, I'm like, okay, let's improve upon improve upon it and do it over and over again. And then more things are coming. So, more people are coming out. I'm able to travel to more places. Like, I went to Japan last year. That was not obviously in the plan, but mm-hmm. it's like, why not? So, I think each year, when I continue to improve upon what I've done in the last, more possibilities are born. To whom or what would you credit the success to? You know what I mean, like in your in the dance industry, because you, I, I, I would, I would say you like leading this journey. It comes to like, the dance industry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like Africans from the, from the continent and in the diaspora. Like, Whoa! <laughs> I'm serious, man. Like it ain't, it ain't no lie. Does a every state Um. <laughs> Who or what would you credit the success? To? I would say my team, obviously. Obviously, okay, whenever I say my team, right? Mm-hmm. It's basically just me and Ling, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that's literally my team. Um, so, I would say, like, obviously, I think, and I know this is going to sound weird, but my upbringing, right, has prepared me for this. Um, the team that I have, not being afraid to invest in myself, and not being afraid to dream. I think, like, sometimes when I talk to certain people, 
and I realize how people think. I realize how differently I think from a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's due to my upbringing. Like, I'm not afraid to just be like, why can't I be in that room? Oh, you're a dancer? Okay. And mm -hmm. what's the point? You know? Oh, yeah, you okay. go. You go. Go ahead. Okay. So I think that's. Yeah, just being me, investing in myself, having a team, a very small team, because a lot of people shouldn't have a say in your career, especially as a creative, because then it starts to get very messy. Like too many chefs in the kitchen? You yeah, mean? you know, so you start to doubt yourself, all that different thing. And I think with um, my uh, relationship with uh, Lang, partnership. We know he's uh, we can't be blocking his blessings. Yeah, you feel me? I was so, gonna say he's um, busy in the streets, but you know, you clean he's sorry. In the <laughs> yes, he belongs to the streets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, like <laughs> I think, um, but yeah, so it's like the dynamic we have is like when I'm being myself, like regardless of if he likes what I do or not, like I think he he just like supports me right mm -hmm. so if it's just like okay i handle the creative and he handles the business side mm -hmm. we're able to do our job perfectly mm -hmm. and it just merges together and we just put it out there i dig so. it last time you were here you know say i we you were still trying to you were still stuck in the middle in the sense of like trying to you know pursue the dance full time and like you know saying going to your place of work you know one day a week <laughs> part time <laughs> Is it safe to say dancing? At that is, time, I was still yes. Oh, I think it was Starbucks or something. I was at uh, Urban Outfitters. Yeah, Urban Outfitters. Yeah, I was. Uh, Look at you now. You can buy the whole <laughs> chin. <laughs> They're sending me clothes. <laughs> Dang! Now you got even, you got even got your own you go online. Try yes, it. yes, third world tribe. Yes. Oh my god. Um. So yeah, that's a a clothing collection. Um. It's like um. Um, it's founded by me and my two elder brothers. So basically, it's just like clothing that's like celebrating people who uh, like are unapologetically African, mm -hmm. or just like they take their culture and whatever space career that they find themselves in. I'm a dancer. Our eldest is a professional basketball player in Europe, and my immediate senior is an accountant. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like even if you're an accountant, a lawyer, um, a dancer, like. Uh, a scientist whatever bringing your culture into those spaces and not being afraid to show like who you are to people i think is a very beautiful and bold thing to do mm. so that's just like what that line is and celebrating that i dig it man and the stuff is dope too oh, you know what I'm saying? like it's you. very unique so dancing full time now yes of course Hi. of course <laughs> how do you do it how do you do it how do you do it because there's a lot of you know what I'm saying like, i watch your lives because during the pandemic and we're gonna get into that you know doing a lot of people it's like how do you make this thing a career hmm whoa um <laughs> i really need to stop talking like that um <laughs> but um <laughs> so I don't know i think like obviously dance has been something that's been part of my life for a long time for as long as i can remember even though dance wasn't like the career path that i wanted to go in mm -hmm. um but it was just something that was always there so when i went to college and i've said this a bunch of times i found afrobeats yeah so i was able to connect who i was or who i am with what i love to do yeah so i think in doing so i found like a puzzle that i enjoyed solving right so it's like in the hip-hop world i was a hip-hop dancer um for majority of my life um in that world i didn't i felt like a tiny fish like in a big sea mm -hmm. right but when i found like afro at that time in the u.s the afrobeat scene was no non-existent mm -hmm. right the the closest you will come to that is like your asa dance teams at yeah, the colleges yeah, and high schools yeah. right but as a profession it was like non-existent so it was like okay I'm dancing to this type of music on campus. I'm gaining popularity. Now we're going outside of campus and people are like, oh, we want more. I said, okay, let's attach some monetary figures mm -hmm. to this thing. And then, yeah, that's just how it started. Would you say you, you kind of like, you know, help pioneer the making it a career kind oh, of thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I think it's a bunch of us. Let's say in the U.S., I would say I'm part of the, the few people to like start that, it, um, make it a, you know yeah but i think it's like a group effort like it wasn't just like me and i was just like oh i have this idea mm -hmm. follow me um there were people doing things in their own different ways at that time um i just 
found my own way. So when you time. when you you know said now that it's full time, were you not dancing mm-hmm. or you know touring, mm-hmm. doing the many incredible things that you're doing? What are you doing? I'm at home, life? stuffing my face, getting fat, <laughs> feeling down and depressed. Uh yeah, COVID. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's basically this year. So what's the um, regimen though? Like, do you work out? Like, you know, is this this pressure stretches? Cause you seem like you're natural. You just get up and do the thing. <laughs> well, um, I don't want to give away my secrets, <laughs> but um, I would say one thing. I okay, so I started running. Like me, I wanted me to run. She talking like, like you, <laughs> you got four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, manager. Is it? Cause literally, this boy was like, um, I think I posted like a video. Um, it was like a video I posted a couple months ago. I was doing like it was like a whining challenge. Mm-hmm. Like I was whining down and whining up. And he was so like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, cause I had my stomach. I was like, yeah, let me put this jiggle to some good use. He just commented, I like, saw that, yep, I saw that. we're going to the park on Monday. Oh no! Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, but then it's like when I start running, it's like I feel great, mm-hmm. right? Um, because I was running before last year, like before I went to Ghana, I was like, okay, I want to build my stamina because doing a festival is going to be a lot. So I was running, but then with this one, it was kind of like a different thing. It's like, I'm not running to train for anything. I'm just running so that my body can at least stay fit for however long this lockdown lasts. Um, but yeah, so the running thing, um, I dance in the garage. I dance like in my living room. Um, I stretch sometimes, but apart from that, no. I'm just, no I would say youth is on my side. Ah, man. Listen, the genes is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I, I don't know how you do it. But um, you here, you know what I'm saying? Because you got a new film. You got a new team coming out. <laughs> no, she just, she just a gift that keeps giving. She just keeps diversifying. Just keeps being innovative. And we love it. I love it. You know what I mean? It's not just one uh, one layer to the onion. But we're going to get into it. The movie is called Ezek Bay. We're going to mm-hmm. get deep, deep into it. But got to catch up with you, man. What you been doing with COVID? What you been doing, you know, saying to keep yourself sane, keep yourself busy through COVID? Because you, you're usually out doing dance classes and everything. So it's like, yo, you one of the bruh. non-essentials, quote unquote. Bruh, bruh. <laughs> bruh. Um, I'm not even going to lie. So like at first, um, when the lockdown happened in March, so literally the day I came into Maryland, um, because I had a, my tour Mm -hmm. so i was touring at that time i had a class tour going on and the day i came into maryland the next day was the dc class Mm. literally when i say this thing was over sold out it was over sold out and then they said lockdown Mm. studios are closed i thought you i thought you fled new york because yeah i was dropping like flies i thought you came here for refuge no (laughs) no i came here to teach to work i was so happy oh yeah that's right you were supposed to come here on the show yeah I came to work and then they just locked everything down because for me i was like okay yeah new york city's on lockdown i yeah. was like dc we're still live tomorrow there's no lockdown they nah. said um you can have events that are that are less than 500 people we ain't 500 we could do it next thing you know they say lockdown I said, mm. <laughs> so from there like starting off with the lockdown for me i was like okay this isn't any different from like when i'm not working yeah like, i'm just normally at home so for me it wasn't bad like i had people um there was um a photographer who reached out to us with a concept and he was like oh um let's capture how um your mental health can be affected by this lockdown mm. and to me i was like okay y'all just being dramatic like relax it's only been like two weeks like but then three months passed you're like yo <laughs> what am i doing <laughs> Then four months passed. I said, whoa, what is going I I went into a very dark space. There were a lot of things that happened, obviously, that um, played into that. Mm-hmm. And maybe we can dive into that later. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I was going to ask, because a year ago on your social media, um, you mentioned not... And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've come out of this, this phase in life. But you mentioned not being fulfilled by just the emotion of doing a class and not, you know, just dance, dance, dance. And so now we have a film, which, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've been innovative now, you know, branching out from that. But talk about it, man. Okay, so I would say for the last couple of years, one thing I've found that I've been doing is like I've been pitching a lot of ideas to artists, hmm. right? So I will create this mood board. I will send to this artist. Or let's say I have this gig. I will have all these beautiful ideas. And then when I realize that I can't do it, it's kind of like disheartening in a way. Mm. So for me, it's like, I kept on thinking like, oh, I need an artist to do my concepts in order for it to be successful, Mm. right? So then I'm like, uh, why, right? 
yes okay obviously if let's say a tiwa savage does my concept that's a little bit that's more eyes on it than if let's say i were to do it however why can't i do it right, right? right. obviously there's a couple things that play into that finances can i get sponsorships can i do all these different things um and then i was just like you know what you saved right you saved a lot of money you've done all this amazing stuff there's by god's grace is going to continue to come tenfold mm-hmm. right use your money yeah and just create it why not i felt like literally reflex i felt to the point that again lang had to take me to texas roadhouse <laughs> mm. okay oh, manager i need to hire one of you that's what i was saying, <laughs> that's what I was saying. like literally i was feeling so down like dark mm. like i felt i had no control like things were hitting me left right center from not being able to travel not being able to teach people saying virtual classes i'm like bro i don't want to do that mm. um people are saying tutorials i'm like bro i don't want to do that my friend passing then um family like relationships and that coming to light you know all these different were just slapping me left and right and i was like i can't move Mm-hmm. I felt stuck in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, though. You feel me? I felt so stuck, and then he like pulled me to brunch, and he was like, "Yo, let's re-strategize." Because for me, it was like the the film, like we had it planned since March. Because mm-hmm. I literally got a phone call from my cousin in January, and she was like, "Okay, we already know you can dance. What next? Okay, yeah, you dance. Okay." what next mm-hmm. and to me i was just like huh and then she was sending me like these different videos you need to start doing this and i'm looking i'm like do you see the budget <laughs> for this video yes and she's like and and mm-hmm. so then i was like why not mm-hmm. why not if i feel stuck i feel out of control the only thing i can control is my art so Suf, get a ticket come down f- from canada to the u.s and let's make this pr- let's make this film so yeah who did, so uh, you you mentioned Souf. Uh, mm-hmm. Who did you tap? Who else did you tap? And what you know? Saying where did you go to make this thing happen? Uh well, we say in Maryland. Um, but at first, so at first it was just me, Souf, and obviously Lang that were um part of the project yeah. to start off. So then I got another gig. Um. <clears throat> A little bit closer to the time we started shooting so i was like okay i want to make this like even larger than life because even with the way one in there (laughs) you know (laughs) even with the way like the project i'm gonna give this gig right it needs to be at a certain quality so that next time they know who they are talking to Mm. hey you feel me (laughs) you feel me yeah so um i decided to bring on um, troy massa and um nikki billy jean shout out um, shout out they've been on the pod go watch that you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um Troy came on as a creative and art director um uh, alongside me and then Nikki came on as a fashion director alongside Tribe and um I brought on two dancers mm. um Nadia and Glory from um Maryland they're fire. Um I also brought on um We had Princess Bruffy for hair, we had Flapjack for makeup, we had um um chanel for bts photography we had love for rico one of the most creative photographers i know um to take the official photos for um the film Man, jones is fire <laughs> <laughs> you shall see them soon yeah uh, <laughs> november 25th you feel me so um we brought in a lot of people and then um i was able to reach out to um some designers which i don't know like this blows my mind like the concept that i'm able to collaborate with certain designers that i see at a certain level just off of the fact of being a dancer Mm. right so last year for afro nation i reached out to uh, tj who and i reached out to la falaise dion if you guys don't know is the queen of cowries Wait, am I supposed to say that? Yes, no. <laughs> Y'all suck it. Y'all suck it. Is this coming out after yeah. or before? Yeah, we have said enough already. Right? Keep going. Oh, no. I'm going to caption this by this out. Um, so, yeah. So, I literally just reached out to them like via DM. And they were like, oh, no. It's that blue check. Up. <laughs> no, this was before. It. This was oh. before. It. Exactly. Because then I was doubt to myself, is it because of the blue check? But they have blue checks, so it don't matter. So, um, but this was before, like, um, this was last year. So, I didn't mm-hmm. get verified until this year. Um, this was last year, um, let's say around like October, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. And they were like, yo, we love your stuff, da da da, anything you want, da 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 da. So when this project happened, because Afro Nation didn't go like as uh, 
planned creatively mm-hmm. as yeah, I wanted yeah. it to be. Um, but then this year I was like, okay, if I'm going to do my whole project, why not? We reached out to them. They send me the pieces. I said, whoa. Let's do it. Yeah. Man. <laughs> so you, you mentioned something, you know what I mean? Like when people see it, not just your easy to dance. And it's self-titled as well. I'm, I'm guessing that's, you know, that's the, that's the whole aim behind it. Um, yeah, so um, Iziegbe means patience in um, Benin language. I'm an Edo girl, a Benin girl. Um, so with that, um, okay, I'm just going to say it. Lang is the one who uh, decided to name it that. So obviously it's Iziegbe, but like each visual is named after a flower. Mm-hmm. So for me, this um, project is paying tribute to a lot of people. So I originally wanted to name it Flowers. And he was just like, no, why don't you just name it? Zegbe, it means patience. This is a project about you giving flowers to people. This is something that's embodying your vision. So why not name it? And I was like, oh, I hate when you're right. Mm. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, so we did that. Um, so basically, Zegbe just means like, I think this year we've all had to exercise patience. a lot of patience. Facts, yeah. Right? So even with even with this project, I had to exercise a lot of patience. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, in, within my career, I had to be very patient to go through um, the different stages that I've been through so far. And even in the future, I know I'm going to have to um, exercise more patience. Yeah, so. man. November 25th, the project is coming out. Yeah. If you have not watched the trailer yeah. yet, he is his Instagram, yeah. Twitter, Facebook, yeah. YouTube, all that great stuff, man. Yeah. Um, what can people expect from this joint? And where, where can we watch it when it drops? Yes. Right now, I think you can go sign up for the newsletter. On your yeah, website? You can, um, yeah, so you can sign up on my website, which is easyegbay.com. So it's like theproject.com. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, so you can go there for exclusive content, like an alert when the actual video drops. Um, yeah, so the site. Oh, oh, so one thing I want people to take away from this is like, don't only watch just the film. Like, also go experience the website, right? Because the web designer we have for this, when I tell you this lady is... Enough set. Enough set. <laughs> Just go and click the link. <laughs> link is in the description. Go check it out. Oh uh, man, I'm excited for this though. I'm excited. Lang, you didn't send it to me. Well, I haven't done it now. <laughs> okay. You said it. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. What is this? The fourth. We still got 25 days. Episode is dropping soon. Please go check out the movie. You have been able to work in different continents, you know what I mean? Asia, Africa, United States, North America, mm-hmm. focusing on Africa, you know, and, and uh, Europe, you know, <laughs> what is the work ethic like? You know, you mentioned, you know, Afro Nation. What is the work ethic like as you travel these different continents, these different sectors when it comes to dance? Because mm-hmm. the culture of dance, man, like watching you in Japan, for example, the mm-hmm. people just, it's a different kind of energy. Yeah, yeah. Um... <clears throat> So I would say even the Japan thing, right? So that was kind of just like, uh, okay, Killing Them dropped. I wanted to go on tour. I remembered um, a lady who attended my class two years ago and said she was from Japan. Mm-hmm. So I DM'd her. I said, yo, is it possible? And she's like, all right, let me do my research real quick. She's like, yeah, we can do five classes in three cities. It's lit. Let's go. So when I put that out there, someone said, ah, you're going to Japan. Who is going to come to your class? They're not Africans. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you see, they say you think actual Jap- Japanese people are going to come to your class? And I was just like, uh, yeah, yeah, I do. So when I went there, like. Bet you them joints were sold out. <laughs> all five? I, I, would, I would say all five was sold out. <laughs> <laughs> I would say give me three years. Yes, that we could be doing maybe like a hundred, a hundred people good, right? Um, but it was like, cause I was the first, I'm the first like Afrobeats dancer who's ever done a tour in Japan. Mm. Right. Um, there's like tours and classes. You better list that resume out. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) 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 I'm weak. So it was kind of like, I'm like the guinea pig in a way. Right. So when I went out there, bruh, and it's like, when I went out there, I was, um, it was like a couple, I think it was like five days before my birthday right so even as i'm working i'm teaching like people asking me so many questions um because even even through the marketing right so um saya who was our host she was saying in addition to your dance videos also send me pictures of your hair tutorial Mm. and i was like huh she's like no 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 they're into things like that right going in there i'm seeing like they have a whole dance hall scene right 
I'm seeing Japanese people with dreads. <laughs> so I'm seeing all these different things. Like they've embraced the culture. Like they even had like the first like Afro Beats battle show. Mm. And I was one of the judges on that. So I was just like, they're like embracing everything. And then mm-hmm. there are also a lot of Africans in Japan mm-hmm. too. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. And then um, <laughs> I was stuck on Japan. So now I would say like that, that hunger to learn, I would say that's what is very um, um, special about Japan. Um, for the U.S., I think we're very innovative, mm. right? Especially when it comes to the business side. And I've said this all the time, like in the U.S., an Afrobeats dancer is forced to create a brand separate from the artist. If not, you will not eat understand so i think business wise we're very innovative um on the continent i would say obviously the skill level is crazy the stamina is crazy um what's it called technique everything is there um and they're open too they're very open like when you come in there like people are willing to collaborate with you exchange with you do all these different things so i would say like each each space in Europe too, they're very heavy on um, uh, sticking to the rules, right? Mm. So with them, there's just this ongoing conversation of people who blend styles, right? They believe everything needs to be, mm. you know, in, in, in your own category, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So um, I think each scene has different things to offer. Yeah. Man, I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, you mentioned Afro Nation Ghana. Speaking of Puerto Rico, by the way, sorry to everybody who didn't get the refund. I know people like you ain't complaining because you probably got paid off the early. <laughs> you probably got paid off the early. You collected your check. <laughs> you didn't do the refund. I'm not puzzled, please. I'm in the Ghana branch, please. <laughs> but speaking of that, though, I wanted to ask, as far as like collaboration between East and, and West Africa when it comes to mm-hmm. dance, you know what I mean? Because East Africa, they have their own dance scene. I, maybe I'm not peeping it, but it's not really there as far as like the so um which is uh um something i was also interested in too so like during this covid um season i started a segment on my agency platform called tribe conversations yeah and i was able to bring up um some choreographers from is it kenya kenya i think yeah chiluba um oscar malawo and um aggie the dance queen they're from kenya please tell me where is Salty Soul from? Kenya. Kenya. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. They're from Soul Kenya. Soul Generation, yeah, Kenya. Yeah. And then I was um going to bring on um Diamond Platinum's um choreographer. Um Google you know, it. you know, yeah. You know, it. yes. One um, thing I would say, you give, you give a lot of shout outs, you give a lot of roses, so I, we appreciate that. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course. Why not? Why not? Um so with with that, like I was having a conversation with them and one thing they were saying is that in <laughs> <laughs> In Kenya, um, um, dance styles are seen as more um, successful, right? So it's just that now that a lot of the dancers, because like if you go to Kenya, they, they train you in ballet, they train you in jazz, they mm-hmm. train you in hip hop, all that good stuff. That's those are the type of dancers who are getting the corporate jobs, right? So now a lot of people are starting to try to teach the youth to um, accept their own cultural styles as well as their own street styles so i think that revolution is slowly happening um because obviously like in nigeria right you have your traditional styles that are specific to each culture right each tribe right but then you have the street style Mm. right so i think the street style is like cool it's edgy it's like social dancing right so i think when you get the youths to tap into that and find that cool that's when um, um, East African dance styles will start like touching the map yeah, globally, yeah. right? But I think it's gonna happen mm. soon. Speaking of that, I sent you, a, I sent you a joint from Netflix, and you, I don't know if you watched it. It was like a South African, yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know the man um, that's the lead is the father of Doja Cat, for real? Yeah. Hey yo. <laughs> the lead, no, because I, I was like, I was so intrigued because I um, I watched, I only watched the first episode. He was in the Beyonce joint, right? I think. Oh wait, oh, maybe. Are we getting the, no i think it is the same guy that's yeah, doja cat's father yeah. it's the same guy that's doja cat i'm a that's Google news that. to me i'm gonna yeah. look that up for real yeah 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 Dang. yeah and he's a like a pretty famous um pretty pretty famous actor yeah that's that's a father that's i think dope. 
Did you? So you you watched it? You checked it out? I watched the first episode. So um, and then that inspired me to bring on um, Pansula teacher Tebza hmm. to come on the tribe conversations to tell us about the history of Pansula. See, so I contributed that to these things. You can't say I don't do my part. Yes, me. <laughs> Allow it. <laughs> what, like you, so, you really like? I mean, we asked you this last time. You really study these joints. You study this. You know. I'm trying to. Um, I'm trying as much as possible. So for me, it doesn't really feel like. I'm like studying like in school. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm just intrigued mm-hmm. and I want to know. And I've been blessed to have the access where I reach out to a dancer in Tanzania or like South Africa. And it's like, they're like, oh, I love what you do. Or I already know what you do. So I, I can give you the information or I'm down to spread the information um, to your demographic because it's a little different than mine. So let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, I'm not afraid to ask a question. I'm not afraid to learn. Like even with South African dances, like I'm taking um, Pansula courses from um, Spu- Spusiswa. Spusisu. Sorry, the South African name sometimes is very confusing. But, but Spusisu. <laughs> it's like, let me show. Spusisu. Spusiso. So, and also Tebza teaches classes too. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, if I can't be there, I would love to be there in person. Like that's how I, I, I learn by collaborating and learning in person. But I think as a dancer, I'm going to continue learning for the rest of my life. So. And that's, that's the love for the art. That's the love for the craft, which I think in that collaboration, which had, you know what I'm saying, brought you to a uh, solo on the Apollo. I think it was the Apollo with Burner Boy, Jimmy Kimo with Malik <laughs> Berry. You know what I'm saying? Empire oh, yes. on Fox. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Bruh. <laughs> what have you not done? Oh, yes. I've not done a lot. I've not done a lot. But Speak I've about that. You know, start from start from the burner joint. Having that solo. You've, you've spoken about it. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think for you, it was unexpected, too. <laughs> like, he kind of just backed out a little bit. Okay. It was... The way it happened was unexpected. Like, I'm saying, like, on the stage, the performance was unexpected. But since, like, um, Killing Them dropped, like, I think it was, like, February, beginning of February, we'd always, we'd been in contact with his team, mm-hmm. like, about possibly joining the tour, um, doing a show, etc. And they're like, New York is definitely a go. Um, we'll let you know about, like, others. Let's find a way to incorporate all that good stuff, right? So when Apollo happened, I remember... Um, I went downstairs to like where his um, the backstage for him and his crew and stuff like that, and there's this lady who I, I think I was just like in a corner and there was this girl I was like Essie, and I was like huh, and she's like oh my god I'm such a fan I'm such a fan da, 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 da. show me that dance move yeah is it the <laughs> and so I was just looking I was like okay like I was just laughing with her next thing she's like Berna! and I just turned I said why are you shouting and I realized that, that was Berna's cousin mm. and then she's like yeah this is Izzy you know like with the hat thing yeah with the hat and I was like. Oh yeah, he's like, oh, then he just look at me. He said, do you have you have the hats? You have. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, yeah, I have everything. I got you, I got you. He's like, oh wow, you're too pretty to be dancing like that. So I said, <laughs> I, yeah. I said, oh, I don't know how to take oh, that, Lua, but Lua. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now, so like when I went on stage, like I I was so nervous, like nervous, but I was I was confident um to the point because. I taught the class, like the Killing Them choreography, a couple days before. So it was like my muscle memory Mm -hmm. was really good with it. But I was just nervous. I was like, oh my God, this cape. Now if I step on the cape and I slip and I strangle myself, what will happen? Oh my God, (laughs) what happens? So for me, like when the song drops, blah, 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 blah. (laughs) (laughs) So I walk out to the side. People are screaming because I was at the corner because I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, normally artists would just go to the front and yeah, then dance yeah, would yeah. just do their things. So I said, let me just cuckoo stay myself on the side. I didn't even know he, like, left the stage and was just, like, mm-hmm. looking at me and was just like, it's your t- it's your time. Yeah. Soon as, boom, ka, 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 happened. I said, whoa. <laughs> I blacked out. Like, I did not know what I literally, literally. blacked out. And after I was done, he came to me. One of the freestyle with me, I was, I'm tired. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. And I went to the side. And then I think it was um, Young Prince. No, no, no. It was Anuel. He came up to me. He's like, I've never been proud of you than I am in this moment. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I was just like, oh, yeah, thank you. Whatever. Then I went to my phone. And watched the joint. And I started seeing the stories. When I say New York City, it, it was like a light show. Like... I was like, I didn't even know. Because like, when I posted the flyer and I was like, oh, about to be live with Berna. Like, people were like, oh, as you should. As you probably you brought some people in it. It's like, no. I, I know. <laughs> no, it was very sold out. Shout out to Duke, you know. Um, it was very sold out. So I was just like, 
But people were like, oh, as you should. I was like, okay, people are just talking online, whatever. Da, da, da. As I was about to step on stage, I saw some people shouting, like, yes, 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 yes. And I was like, mm. <laughs> but when I saw the stories, when I tell you, it was just coming in back to back to back to back from supermodels I'd worked with, mm-hmm. from Naomi Campbell to Stefan Don to, to, it was everywhere. I was just like, to like people I'd never met, like, random people probably accountants dancers yeah, not yeah. Dance, everywhere and then when he came down when i knew i'd done an amazing job he came down he kissed stefan obviously and then came straight to me and just hugged me then his mother was like you you girl <laughs> <laughs> so i was like huh because she's like very intimidated i don't know if you've like seen it like from the like make oh yeah yeah i've had people work with her yeah bro she's very intimidated so i was like <laughs> auntie and then she came she hugged me and she kissed me i was like okay yes yeah, i did a fantastic it. job I've made it whatever we're done yes <laughs> <laughs> i would ask you how you know the whole jimmy kimmel with malik berry and you know fox on empire uh empire on fox came about but i'm gonna flip it okay and say what were the checks like Considering inspiration for the people coming after you. First of all, I'm gonna ask you how the link up happened. I'm gonna flip that. Ask you what were the checks like. First of all, talk uh, about. Let me just quickly shout out Amari Wiles for bringing me on for the uh, Jimmy Kimmel uh, show. That was actually his gig, and he was just like, "Yo, Izzy, I need you in New York. Come through." Because I was in Maryland at the time. So shout out to you, Amari. Um, for the Empire thing, yeah. About the checks, yeah. Um, (laughs) let's just say. I was compensated. That's it. Yes. And I learned a lot. Like, obviously, because, like, working within the commercial market, there's certain things that you can learn. Like, okay, for the Jim Kimmel, you're still getting residual checks. So every time that show streamed anywhere in the world, you get a check. Mm-hmm. So it's like, to the, even if it's five cents, it was you seven dollars. So things like that was, like, really interesting. It's like, wow, like... They should be implemented in the yeah, Afro scene. Yeah, you know, yeah. if I do a commercial in Nigeria, I should be living off of that. And speaking of that, you know what I mean? Not, not to, you know, get it back into it. I, I really want to applaud you too, you know, with the whole um, Yemi yeah, like they thing, you know, standing your ground. Oh, thank you. You know what I mean? And making thank sure you. that, you know, credit is given oh, and yes. people are paid. Oh, yes. Yeah, facts. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Last, before you, you, some of these questions are from when you were supposed to come back. I was going to ask, is teaching a class hard? How easy it is to sell tickets? But I don't think them questions are like, I don't we think them <laughs> anything this year i don't think no questions <laughs> not not even that like i don't think you'd be easy it'd be hard for you to sell tickets oh, now no, it's hard though it's still hard well it, i won't say it's hard um i think for me i'm just very like ugh. when it comes to marketing i'm just like oh my god i gotta post every day every two i have to find content here left right and center just because you know this day cynthia may not be be on instagram so but tomorrow cynthia might be on instagram so i might as well post today and tomorrow so that cynthia sees it and buys the ticket yeah 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 but i'm blessed so i wouldn't i wouldn't take that for granted though Mm. what's the what's the love life looking like these days (laughs) (laughs) corona um (laughs) well um the dms open I no, I don't know. That's the thing. It's like I'm at a. Point we had like, a whole conversation about this last time. <laughs> I know. It's like sometimes I would say I want, but then I'm like no, because I'm the type of person like I don't want to leave my house. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what it is with me, and it's like now getting to know people over and over again. Easy. It's just like Easy. she saw. She saw. Oh man, bro, it's, it's so <laughs> much. Cause like sometimes, like okay, yeah, you want that person that you flirt with and you know that's there for you, all that good stuff. But then you realize the amount of effort it takes to actually f- water that type of relationship. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Mm. I want to go back to work. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last time you mentioned how you know how hard it is for people, you know, guys feeling intimidated. Oh yeah. I was gonna say, you know, you, you, you got the burner account activated yet? <laughs> the burner account. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know. What no? Look, if you <laughs> <laughs> if whatever I've done intimidates you, then I'm sorry. You're too weak for me. Mm. Like that's literally how I see it. There's not it's not like because like you know, if me at this level intimidates you just imagine me 10 years from now Mm. right so if you can't even handle me at this beginning stage and this is me just starting this i I haven't even done your your, she never even begin to talk yet 
You feel what I'm saying? And you can't handle it now. Then you wouldn't last the test of time. So I want someone who's comf- uh, confident in themselves, yeah, have yeah, their yeah. own ab- ambition, have their own thing going. Yeah, yeah. That's not like can still be my cheerleader and be genuinely happy for me and support me. And then obviously and also I fit- go out and get their own too. And get and get your own thing. It's like because for me, I'm I feel like I'm the type of person that uh, with my relationships, it can't be like uh, we're together all the time, twenty four seven. It's like I think you going out like i need you to inspire me right to motivate me it's like oh wow he's doing this that and the third oh wow i feel lazy let me go do this that and the third like i need that type of Mm. yeah yeah what's the craziest thing that a guy has like because i you know just even me being on live with you that one time just seeing the comments i'm like ah how do you do what's the craziest thing somebody said in your dms Uh, craziest thing I uh, hold on. Did they send a snowflake like uh Quaver D to Sway D? What's the snowflake thing? I don't know because I keep seeing it on Twitter. It's like I'm your snowflake? glacier boy. You so icy. I'm your glacier boy. And then you were like, ah, what's handing in? Headass. <laughs> <laughs> Head um um, uh, I can't think of like it's like people say say things like obviously I want to marry you, um it's babies African all that good stuff. <laughs> I would say the one of the wildest comments that I can think of right now. Is that um, I remember when I posted a video, it was like a freestyle to Soko, and someone was saying that um, someone man commented, he's like, You this one, the artist will shift your womb, Kali. something like that. And I was just like, What the hell? Huh? <laughs> I said, What? <laughs> but yeah, I-, I would say, Yeah, people just well, I've had like a couple girls hit on me. Um, you know, I think people assume I go both ways. Um, yeah, I'm not greedy. Yeah, I stick to one side. You feel me? But if you if you go both ways, it's like I'm happy for you. You know, do your thing. Mm. I'm glad we finally got out of the way. Because <laughs> <laughs> she has at least tell what kind of match she's looking for. How to you know do the approaching? <laughs> At this point, there's no more questions I can help you people with. Just send your snowflakes and keep it. Yeah, <laughs> and if I if I go to your profile and see what I like, then maybe it's so no burner account. No, 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 no. I don't have the energy for that one. Thank you very much. <laughs> Listen, this is this. Uh, I want I, you know this is when we interacted in your life. Um, this is one of the questions that, and I, I think I remember asking you this, but I just want to put it again on the record. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are sitting like on a you know Mount Rushmore of dancers. Oh, um, really? There's a lot of dancers coming up after you especially as we're reopening a lot of people practicing i hope right now in the basements or whatever speak about envy in this industry and you know saying like jealousy if you encounter that how to deal with it and you know because it's it's an entertainment industry mm-hmm. you know i'm a, I'm a mm-hmm. musician and it's mm-hmm. just a cutthroat scene mm-hmm. how do you deal with it how do you advise people to manage it yeah i'll speak about how to deal with it within yourself because no one is above feeling a certain way towards other people and also how to deal with it when receiving it from others right so i would say in both like in both instances like staying true to yourself so for me if let's say i feel any type of bad energy like oh my god i'm jealous because this 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 this, and the third right one thing i know is that what i've set up right regardless of if i work with this this that and the third i'm still going to be able to eat maybe the level at which i'll be able to eat will not be the same if i worked with so 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 and so however i still have the agency to provide for myself right so i just focus on that and just keep doing me right Mm -hmm. and then secondly one thing i also do is that it will not be an industry if you are the only person within it Mm -hmm. right so one thing i said is that me even trying to spread knowledge or opportunity to other dancers is a very selfish act because in order for me to be you must exist Mm -hmm. right in order for me to be within an industry there has to be an industry of other people except for myself right so that's kind of like how i see it as for people who envy me or have any bad um energy towards me look at the end of the day you don't gotta like me to respect my hustle right so if i don't like you but i think you are the greatest afro house dancer and the client requires an afro house dancer i will hire you and it will be simply work. When mm. we leave that work, you don't have to talk to me. You don't have to like my photos. You don't have to say happy birthday or anything. Yeah. You keep it pushing because at the end of the day, this is business. And we, we have to keep business going in order for this industry to last. So that's how I personally, I, I don't care. 
I think even like personally, like in my own life, like that's just how I am. I stick to myself. I stick to my people. I only have a few friends. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, I don't care what you're saying. Even when people tell me things that other people have said about me, I just laugh. I said, well, you didn't say it to my face. So obviously you are pussy. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I have remembered this like three times in the course of this interview. Um, and I want to get it in now. There's a couple people. I forget two of them, but there's three people I want you to give shout out to. One is my sister in Gesso, So please go ahead. Gesso. And do that for in Gesso. Yes. Ah, that's a pretty name. Shout out in Gesso. Um, yeah, reflexes, yeah, the love, two. energy, pure positive vibes. Your there's way. two more. I'm forgetting y'all name. Always <laughs> hitting me up. They love you. But uh, y'all know yourselves. Easy is in the building. Appreciate y'all checking the podcast out. Easy. Anything about a documentary or film? What are we calling it that you want to say that we ain't touched on? It's coming out November 25th. Website is up and popping. Yes, 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 yes. Dot com. Yes, yes. Um, ah, let's see. I would say when it drops, just... Um, give me feedback right so i would say definitely sign up to the um to the website because like that's going to be a way where i can even figure out where people are from so mm -hmm. now if let's say i go to the analytics and i see that there are a thousand people in kenya that interact with my stuff i know i can go to kenya now and mm -hmm. meet you guys in person so i would say like that like interact with the site interact with the contents leave your feedback be constructive even if it's not like Oh, I love it, right? And you want to give me like, oh, maybe you should have done this. Just do it with respect, because I I come in the DMs. I slice people in the DMs. Don't don't <laughs> don't get it twisted. You feel me? So, um, I would say yeah, interact with the website, interact with the content. Um, be open to it. Like it's just me doing what I want to do and just investing in myself and hopefully inspire someone to do the same in their life. So yeah. I dig it, man. Listen, man. We 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 can go on for on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> I see this man laying over there on this phone. So serious. <laughs> what kind of business is he conducting? He's doing multiple businesses. <laughs> I know. I love it. Listen, easy. We're gonna play a little game, yeah. Okay. Before we wrap this up. I like games. It's four questions. Okay. And you just gotta answer it quick, quick, quick. Rapid. All okay. right. We talking. You know, saying easy to dance. So, what song will you dance to entering on your wedding day? Terry, because Daniel feature in Diamond Platinums. What are you not very good at? <laughs> Let's say cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Describe the color yellow to someone who was born blind. The sun hitting you at 10 a.m. in the morning. Mm, I love that. What are you most curious about right now? This very moment, what are you most curious about? Taxes. Are you, are you part of the 400 and over? <laughs> people who no <laughs> no 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 please no <laughs> no like i'm trying to understand like tax laws and how yeah, 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 you can yeah. write off things yeah <laughs> i dig it listen man we got we got a lot of tax lawyers who've come through the pod I, i'm happy very happy to recommend some of my yes, personal please. who i personally use that will get you out of the way make sure please. you secure that bag but uh, nah, man, listen, shout out to Lane for making this happen. AK Ma, Chiri Tutu, Charles, the whole gang. I did this by myself. Where y'all at? <laughs> Easy, appreciate you coming through, thank man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come back again, update us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's always love. And uh, we're going to see about that check as far as, you know what I'm saying, like your, 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 the video we have of you, you know, doing a shout out on our, on our website. We're going to see about that check. It'll probably <laughs> be like, you know, $2.50, but hey. Hey, look, we are I trying. can buy some ice cream. I dig it. Easy in the house, international dancer, straight out of Benin, Nigeria in the house, Shout New York head. in the house, <laughs> Yellow CC in the house, tribe dancers in the house. <laughs> what? <laughs> this has been Stuck Middle Podcast. If you enjoy what you heard, what you listen to, hit that subscribe button, do a screenshot, send it to all your exes, your aunties, your uncles on WhatsApp. We appreciate y'all kicking it with us, man. Hey, Stuck Middle Podcast, and we are out. <laughs> <laughs>